Yo, check it out. What? I just did the over-the-air update. Yeah. Where you can upload a custom lock sound. I think yours comes with it, right? Yeah. Check it out. Watch this. Pretty classy, right? Yeah, that's a good choice. I like it. That's a good one. Pretty good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What'd you do? Oh, no. No. Well, I mean, you gotta lock your car eventually. We gotta go. I'm gonna hear it at some point. Come on, what'd you pick? I know you picked something. Okay. Yeah. Can I get a oh, Watching Throttle House, I'm Thomas. And I'm James, and this is the new heavily refreshed Tesla Model 3. But why would you buy one when for a lot less money you can get this? It's the exact same car. Okay, it's not exactly the same, but Thomas is right about one thing. Old Tesla Model 3s are available for a lot less money now. A 2018 example, like this long-range all-wheel drive one that we've rented for a few days, can be had for healthily under $20,000 US. Whereas the new long-range Model 3, which by the way isn't actually called a Highland, no longer qualifies for the federal incentive, starts at over 47,000 US, and chuck in a nice red color and some fancy wheels and you're at 51 grand before even optioning things like Advanced Autopilot or FSD. So how different is a new one? And is it worth coughing up the extra dough? Let's find out. <laughs> If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and enjoy the show. It's not bad, actually. It does look better than this. We'll get to that in a minute, but... No, I, I get it. I, it's like 30 grand cheaper. I know, I know. But there's, you know, even from here, what are you doing? What's that there? No, just that leave that alone. It's, you know, what it's, about this? Go, careful, 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 careful. That'll, that'll come right off. Yep. No, 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 no. Stop flicking it. And then here, what, I, what looked like dust, that's all stone chips. It is stone chips, yeah. No, I, know. I bet if I keep walking around yeah, this thing, I'll okay. find stuff. You're going to keep finding stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, I can see yellow there immediately. Uh, yeah, the, well, the, the B-pillar trim is completely coming off. It's only held on by a clip, I think. Two. I see two. two. Oh, good. Two. That's yeah. good. Also, you know, I'll, I've got I'll... this waft of, of, of uh, like the floor of a barber shop, whatever this scent is. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh... Yeah. I'm just going to show you that one because you'll find it eventually. Also, the seat cushion has pretty much completely collapsed, so it feels like you're sitting on two bars. Listen, it's got 50,000 miles on it. 50,000. Yep, 50,000. Not, not 150,000. No. Thomas, it's falling apart. Yes, it is falling apart. But it actually makes sense, right? Because why would you get a new one? They're very poorly made, right? Well, well, you, that's what, why you get a new one. So it's no, not no, no, this. No, no, no. They, they haven't improved their quality control. This is going to fall apart in 50,000 miles. You might as well get Un one that's unconfirmed. already doing it, right? Here's, one, here's it. one I fell apart earlier. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Should we drive them? Yeah, okay. Okay. But keep in mind, you can protect them from the inside a little bit. Oh, you're doing a WeatherTech thing now. I wondered if that was like a smooth <laughs> It was. Smooth it was smooth enough. WeatherTech did support this video, so it was very nice of them. Last time, I was called Mad Mats. I wore the mats and I got shot with a paintball gun and it hurt. Yeah. Yeah. But we've grown up. We're more serious now. Yes. We're not going to do that. We won't. James, what is this? I thought we were going to take it seriously. Why, why do I have to be Mad Mats again? You're not Mad Mats. I'm not? No, today, your liner Richie. Liner Richie? Yeah, look at the moustache. <sighs> this 
is madness, seriously. Madness? This is for the world! Listen, we say messing about for a reason, okay? We'll, we'll get back to WeatherTech at the end of the video, but I do have them in my Golf R, the high performance liners, and they fit beautifully. They're fantastic. The new Model 3. We've had this for a few days now, and I was driving it this morning, and I saw an Infiniti G35 clapped out, like full modded. And I felt like I was inside of an Apple store, looking out at someone leaving Hot Topic. That, that's the vibe that this gives off still. But since this has come out, a bunch of EVs have come out. So it's really interesting to be back in it, especially with these changes. Speaking of the changes, they've made some quite significant ones. It has new front suspension geometry, fancy new dampers, improved body sealing, and new tires. All of this in the spirit of improving insulation and comfort. In the real world, does all of that make, excuse my French, a shit of a difference? The answer is, yeah. This is significantly quieter. We did a decibelometer test because we've been on highways with this and highways and highways as well. And it's a lot quieter. The number is quite far apart. In fact, for a reference point, we tested our own crew Escalade. And this basically is on par with a Cadillac Escalade that costs twice the price. So that's pretty big news. And yeah, they've made it softer but I don't feel any less control. Maybe there isn't quite as much feedback coming through the steering. It's gone a bit more luxury, a bit more refined, but as a result, it feels like an overall more expensive package. Also, the acceleration is about the same. It's still just a hair above four seconds. Honestly, in the real world, this feels like the fastest thing on the road. You can place it perfectly. It goes exactly where you want. It feels like you have endless power. I know there's gonna be a performance that's gonna do sub three seconds, but you just, don't need it and it will have Brembo's and fancy seats and probably some, someone will chop some of the steering wheel out. Speaking of the steering wheel, that's sort of where this starts to fall down a bit and we'll get to the other poor ergonomics later but just I want to highlight the indicator stalk being gone because the drive selector being in the screen now and up here I can get used to. A lot of cars are doing stupid gear selectors these days, fine. But the indicator I need really on the go. And this car feels like it's built for the States, especially for LA. They know people are doom scrolling on their phone and it beeps when the light goes green in front of you. There's now a blind spot monitor in the speaker here. As it manifests as a little red dot, which is actually quite nice. And maybe the indicator is fine here because you're just sort of doing the odd off ramp or left or right. But in Europe, where there are roundabouts and God forbid, double roundabouts, this is awful. The steering wheel's in a different place. You don't know where the indicator is. They feel terrible as haptic buttons. You don't, there's a little bit of feedback saying you've clicked it, but not enough. I really miss the indicator stalk. As I enter the canyons, I gotta be careful here because it does say that there is windy roads for the next four MILFs. And I remember the impression the Model 3 made on us the first time. You cannot get away from the low center of gravity of an EV. It feels like I have M3 performance just zipping around until I hit a corner and then I feel the way and it feels like I'm in the 7 Series. But nah. we sit there and we worry. We're like, oh no, you know, the general public can now drive a Hummer EV and these 9,000 pound things. The Cybertruck is so dumb. The fact that so much of the population have access to this car and can use this car actually fills me with confidence. It's an incredibly confidence inspiring thing. It's not fun. It's not exciting. It's not gonna, it's not thrilling. Like no question, the guy in the Miata in front of me is having more fun. And maybe his steering wheel isn't creaking as much as this one is right now. But man, it can hustle. And things like the i4 and the Ionic 5 and the EV6, they are great. They are fantastic. But I think the Model 3, especially with these changes, still very strongly holds a place as a value proposition still. And probably a lot more so when you can get it for under 20 grand. I'm dry now, thanks for asking. 
Anyway, this is the Model 3. The first time we drove one of these, it was the first car that made us kind of go, oh, EVs, are, they can be really good. Like, it was fun. It was surprising, actually. And ever since then, lots of other EVs have come out, obviously. But the Model 3 is kind of always really, really good at being exactly what it is set out to be, which is a four-passenger, comfortable, easy-to-use electric vehicle. It's still one of the best at doing that, without question. And even this one, with its 50,000 miles on it, and it's physically falling apart, and there's lots of rattles and weird thunk from the rear end, and something's rattling on the roof up here, and then it does feel like I'm sitting on two pool noodles, because the cushioning is gone in the middle of the seat. Even though all of that stuff, this is still quite a good car to drive. It's easy, it's nice, it's smooth, it's quick, real quick. You don't need the performance, you don't. This has got enough straight line poke, <laughs> just enough to make you giggle and find that gap in traffic. And it can still handle a canyon. Since the first time we drove a Model 3, a lot of other EVs have come out. The Polestar 2 with its olden stampers showed us the pitfalls of the Model 3. It felt a little bit loopy in comparison to that, which was very controlled and buttoned down. There's definitely improvements that could be made to the ride, and I'm curious to see what that new one is like, but it's still quite a nice car to drive. For the money, you're getting a lot here. You really are. Yes, it's cheap. Yes, it's very mass-produced, the very definition of mass-produced, so things fall apart. But at least I have turn signal stocks and a gear selector thing, unlike the new one that James is in, right? This is old school. Physical buttons, baby. In conclusion, buying an old Model 3 maybe isn't the worst idea. They've depreciated enough that you're getting quite a lot of car for the money. The battery isn't even that bad still. This one's at 69% and it says 203 miles. That's not amazing, but it's still usable. Before we pulled over to discuss, Thomas and I jumped in each other's cars for a little bit of a reference to see back to back what the new one really brings to the table. Or in Thomas's case, what it leaves off of it. It was such an error to get rid of the turn signal stock and the gear selector stock. What were they thinking? Less is more. No, sometimes more is some and some <laughs> is good. Some is good, yeah. that's the one takeaway. I, I also had a little bit of a vent about it. it Did you? It, okay, yeah, good. It is stupid. Also, I have to say that driving them back to back, they're not that different in the way they drive, especially around the canyons. They're really similar. No, still agile, both agile. The ride's better in that one, but I think what a lot of people are, that are raving about the ride being just night and day, they're attributing to sound, because this one's quieter and that's, that, this is rickety. This one's Sorry, quiet. this one's quieter. This is rickety. This is rickety. Yeah. Yeah. No, but sound's a big part of the ride, and the, yeah. the less vibrations and less stuff coming no, through. No, it's true. We it's use true. our ears. We do. Uh, because in that case, less is more. Is that right? Yeah, no. I don't remember why we were talking about it. But... Design. Okay. They've changed this. Yes, they have. We've got sharp lights. I like them. They look good. Yeah, it looks more like a Tesla Model S. It looks more upmarket. Yeah. It looks a bit like, especially against this red, uh, the Roadster which is one day coming. Oh, oh, like yeah. the new Roadster. Yeah, yeah, 2020 is coming. Right, I actually just read something about that. <laughs> <laughs> 2020, 2020, 2020, yeah, yeah. Oh, I read something about that recently. He said, uh, he, Elon, Elon. With, with capital H, he, um, yeah, he said that it's going to be sub one second, yeah. zero to 60. And it, well, he added to that and said, and that's not even the most interesting, interesting thing about it. Oh, it is. Did you just what we said? He said that it, it was sub one second, and that's not even the most interesting thing. So what is though? I don't know. It's a mystery. Oh, that's what he said. It's a submarine. Oh. It chitty chitty bang bang. Right. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, this is it in its uh, new ultra red. There's one of yeah. two new colors. It's nice. I like it. Well, they've done the Mazda thing. They've respected the best economy color on the market, which go. is Soul Red Crystal. There it is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this is sort of, it's got, we, well, we spoke to the designer. We spoke? We spoke? Yeah. We spoke to, <laughs> plenty of spokes in these wheels. That's, that's where I was going with that. <laughs> that's where you go. We spoke to the designer of the uh, Mazda MX-5 and the Lucid, and yeah. he was in charge of, I think he was in charge of sorting out the Soul Red Crystal. Right. And he said it has a lot of flop to it. Oh, he did say yeah, I remember because he went like that. Yeah, yeah there's a lot, a lot of flop. flop. And I, and I, and and I, I, we, I think we were there, we are like, yeah. 100%. So the flop was, 
I've never seen flop like that. It was a huge flop. And yeah. this now has a big... This, for, <laughs> I think how you use it. For, te <laughs> for Tesla owners, this now has a bigger flop. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so obviously the front's changed. It's a bit sharp here. Instead of like going up here, it's made that look bubbly. It's almost like a... It's nine... a decent amount of flop over here, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to yeah. stay, it's got to stay, you know, malleable. Yeah, yeah, um, it compresses in the wind. Yeah. But the, this sort of reminds me of 996 to 997 Porsche 911, where it's got runny egg headlights. Yeah, yeah, these are, these are not good. I've never really liked them. And now we've got this, the frog has become the snake. Uh, okay. And we've got these 19 inch upgraded wheels. These are the Nova wheels. Yeah. Uh, and then as we come down the side, we've got different. This exactly the same profile wise, right? Same body. It is, yeah. No, some of the yeah. panels have been changed though. It has been adjusted. Yeah, I mean, the overall shape is the same. Sli yes. It's a blob. Yeah, yeah, it's a blob. Yeah. They are blobs. Yeah, yeah. I'm not impassioned about this design. No. It's an appliance, but it it's, is. now it's a slightly less blobby appliance. It's yeah. sharper. We've got the tail lights have changed. Yeah, well, they, they made there be less of them. There's less tail light. Then, then you don't have to worry about that much water collecting. It's less water will There's collect. no water in that. Well, now. That's all we have. This is the car we're testing. Okay, fine. There's no water in those, in those ones. That's and the, true. And then the, the emblem is spread out as they've all spread oh, yeah, fancy. to be proud. Um, should we look at the interior? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah. absent indicator stalk and driver select aside. That's all I wanted to talk about. <laughs> no, we've done it. We've done it. <laughs> it's so stupid. We've beaten it half to death. <laughs> okay. All right. So, there's some actual good changes in here. So I missed the Scandinavian wood. Right, right off the bat. You miss it? You got the you got the leather here instead, the materials? Yeah, yeah, and this kind of like material up here. It's, yeah. it's a redesign, it's still nice, but I just I like that wood thing. I get it. It was cool. I get it, you like wood. Uh, so the the ambient lighting now is new, this bar that goes all the way around, and you can yeah. customize that in... By customize, do you mean make it different colors? You can make it different colors. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> it is really nice, and it makes it feel spaceshipy at night, but it drives me absolutely nuts that if you look from the outside, like on a through the doors, it doesn't line up. The line goes down and then it changes and it's higher on the back. Why not make it one continuous line? It's, it's because it's value for money. It's value for money. It can't, it can't all be perfect. <laughs> okay. This has more speakers than the outgoing model and the sound system is actually very good. It's quite good actually. We, we, yeah. I've been speaking to, about this to our, our sound man, Harrison, mm -hmm. and he, he said that the, the highs are very crisp and the lows are very good, but the mids are similar to the previous model. And that he would just take the Mark Levinson out of an IS500 over this, but it's not that far apart. Oh, okay. So that's big. It's powerful. It, was, is, it is quite yeah, powerful, yeah. yeah. The chosen song for this one was Princes of the Universe by Queen, and I went ham last night. That's, I, that's a weird way to say all the colors of the wind. Judy Kuhn always has a place in my heart, <laughs> but last night it was Queen. Okay. Um, um, so they've, they've improved some materials around. Yeah, the I got a French, I'm seeing a French stitch there's here. A there's a French stitch instead yeah. of a single stitch. Yeah. And that, that's, that's kind it. of it. The, yeah. the screen, this is a thinner bezel and, and the software's been updated so it's a bit more responsive. To me, this feels like it did in the in the Cybertruck. So yes, yeah, it's, very it's responsive. No, it's no different to the Cybertruck. Yeah. yeah. So it's the new um, stuff, and the new steering wheel aesthetically looks a bit more pleasing. But uh, yeah, the, the, it creaks a bit when you turn. It does creak. Yeah, it, I it said, creaks yeah, a bit. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't a big fan of that because otherwise the car is very silent. Yeah. The the right? only other change I would like to have made, apart from everything so stupidly being to your right, which means you're looking here for everything. Yeah. Like a head-up display couldn't have killed you, uh, or or a gauge cluster something that yeah. means I haven't got to go here for everything yeah yeah uh, and then the rear visibility I find that the trunk sort of it angles up and then you can't really see the uh, the bottom half if yeah that, if that makes yeah. sense I'm used to seeing more of the road no uh, yeah there's definitely a few things but in terms of packaging as a car it's still vastly superior to almost all gasoline cars out there right just yeah. in terms of like space flat floor like the whole thing right like 100%. it does it, it's it makes perfect sense you got the front you got the trunk I don't know. It's 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 still a very well designed vehicle. No, we yeah we've loved the trunk for our for our gear purposes. We had water shoved down in the new corners because what now both corners are yep. available. Yeah. And, wow. And and we can <laughs> shove a whole Samsonite case or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah it's pretty in, handy. In the, in the underneath. This double pane, yeah. Double, double pane. There's double insulation lady. going on. There's less piano black here. This slidey stuff. Yeah, if I remember right, every other Model Three I'd ever been in, someone had wrapped. The piano black because you had to wrap it. You had to wrap it. It'd be so scratched, just like that one is. We don't really need to go in, take a look at that or one. Or into it's, the the cavern of black ice. It's a scented. It's a it's a bit rickety. It's a bit crummy. These things are not really that well made. But I'd I'd love to know that this is a is a departure from that in terms of. Hopefully, yeah. We don't right? know. It does feel like the apple of cars, except 
yeah. Apple were going to have a car, but apparently they just cancelled it. So this is actually the Apple of this cars. This is the Apple of cars. This is it. So my question to you, and maybe this is something for the conclusion, okay. was there's been a lot of EVs that have come out since. Are the updates made to this enough that it's still highly competitive in the EV space? In many ways, the new Model 3 has taken one and a half steps forward and one step back. The decision to remove things that make it easier to operate is a strange one. And it's not just us that thinks that. Ask Europe? The improvements to the insulation and ride comfort and audio system are welcome though, as are the design tweaks and the ventilated seats and the screen in the back for the rear passengers. For some people, the Model 3 was ahead of the game enough when it came out that the improvements here are still enough to keep it in play. Although the competition is fierce. There's some great stuff out there now and it's getting fiercer by the day. But the range, the price point, how easy it is to drive and for now, the supercharger network mean that it's still a solid option. However, the old Model 3 also has access to that same network, so it feels like the new one isn't different enough to warrant the extra cash. Although maybe we'd avoid the high mileage abused rental. But since EV values have been just a touch too unpredictable of late, we'd be happy to have someone else pay for a bit of the depreciation. So, what did we all learn about WeatherTech today? Nothing, James. You didn't hit any of the talking points, like how they're custom fit to your exact vehicle's footwell, and that they can be easily cleaned and sanitized, and that they save your carpets, and that they actually look pretty cool and blend into the interior nicely. You didn't do any of that. You put a mustache on me, duct taped the mats to me, and kicked me into a pool. Right, but to show that they're waterproof. Of course they're waterproof. Anyway... Big thanks to WeatherTech for making this California trip possible. Click the link in the description to find liners for your car, and I promise, next time, we're going to take it seriously. Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay, turn out, Joey, grab the towel from in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get that for like the end screen? If the moustache is floating. <laughs>